So in this video, we're going to talk about t-test for paired samples manual computation. So we're going to have an example of um, ex an experiment. So having 12 uh, participants or respondents, that's RES or, or short for respondents, and um, they have taken all these 12 people have taken both tests test one test two and these are their scores so we have the test one um result result of the first participant or respondent which is 13 and the second the second test he or she got nine so it, it falls to nine and uh test um for the test one of the second respondent uh, he or she got 14 and the test is 11. So many of the majority, I think majority of them are having a low, uh, gets a low score uh, from test one to test two. So um, so we'll, we'll not um, talk uh, deeper about whatever is the nature of the test, but what we want to know is how to um, to determine if there is significant difference between these two groups. So these two groups are not completely different groups because they are coming from the same person, these 12 people. They have taken the same test, uh, test one and test two, or sometimes we call it uh, the pretest and the post test. So this is what you call paired sample um, t test. So because we cannot um interchange these values they are paired there's another t-test we call it uh independent independent sample t-test so which are two different groups and they can be having um different sample size for every group but here in paired samples it should be the same sample size because they are coming from the same people um all right so now the first step to compute uh, the t-test is to determine the difference of these two groups so we have a d which stands for difference so difference meaning we are going to subtract the the two tests so we have um 13 minus 9 that's 4 so 14 minus 11 is 3. So basically, we are subtracting this. 13 minus 9, we get this. 14 minus 11, we get this, 3. And we're going to continue. Uh, 14 minus 12 is 2. 15 minus 12 is 3. Uh, 16 minus 14 is 2. 17 minus 16 is 1. 17 minus 18 is negative 1. 18 minus 18 is 0, 19 minus 18 is 1, 20 minus 19 is 1, 22 minus 20 is 2, and 23 minus 20 is 3. Now, the next step is we are going to um, find the mean and the standard deviation of this difference not the given data but the difference that we have um uh come up with the next column which is this so because what we're after is to solve this t this t stat is the one that we are after so we're gonna find the mean so x bar means mean or the average of this difference and also the standard deviation of this difference that's why there is a subscript d for the mean and the standard deviation well this n is just the number of participants in this study so which is 12 in this case so to, this is 12 and and we still need to know what's the mean standard deviation of this difference again it's the difference not the data itself so now let's go to the formula of finding the mean of uh, the data so in general, um, we find the mean of a data. This is ungrouped data, by the way, because it's not in a uh, group or interval form. So we use this formula sum of the data or x divided by how many numbers, which are 12 in this case. So 
we have uh, 4 plus 3 plus 2 and so on. So this is coming from here. See, these are the one that is being added. And then divided by 12 because 12 is the number of respondents or the, that's the N. So if we add the top, including the negative 1, so you'll get um, 21 and then divide it by 12 which is uh, giving us a mean of 1.75. So that's the, the average of the difference, 1.75. And we need that also to find the standard deviation. So you have to be careful because we're gonna need the mean to find the standard deviation. So if you get a wrong value with the mean, then the rest of the values will be also wrong. As well as the difference, if you get wrong with this first column, with the wrong, at least one mistake of the, the calculations here, then the rest will be also wrong, including the mean. So let's continue. So let's find the standard deviation. So standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So this is the formula to find the variance, the sum of the square of x minus the mean over n minus one. So n again is 12, but the x minus mean, so x is this, the, the d, and the mean is the 175. So let's have that first. Okay, so I'm gonna separate the D and remove the rest that we don't need. And let's change first the D into X. So just um, replacing the label so that we are uh, um, parallel with the formula. Instead of D, we use X, but we'll just put it back later. So um, we're going to add one more column. It's uh, the x minus mean, which is this, x minus mean. I don't know, with the bar, is if it's uh, not, if it's incomplete, but it's the mean, it's the x bar. So basically, it's just, it just means x and the mean. I'm going to subtract it. So uh, here we have 4 minus 1.75. So we'll, where do we get 4? It's coming from here. And where do we get 175? It's the mean. So 4 minus 1.75 is 2.25. And do the same procedure with the next, which is 3. Minus 1.75 is 1.25. 2 minus 1.75 is 0 0.25. And uh, the same thing with 3. So if these are the same, so you just need to copy that. 1.25, 1.25 as well. And also with the 2, 0 0.25. And 1 minus 1.75 is negative 0 0.75. So, and so on. So, it's the same procedure for the next steps. So, um, the next step is to get the square of x minus mean. So, you can see it says square of x minus mean. So, I'm going to add one more column. So, square of x minus mean. So, I'm going to square these values in this x minus mean. If you say square, you multiply it by itself. So it will be 2.25 squared is 5.0625. So meaning 2.25 times 2.25. So same thing with 1.25 and then square it. It will give you 1.5625. Uh, 0 0.25 squared is 0 0.0625. Now 1.25 is repeated. So you just need to copy the square. A result as long as the 0 0.25. Now for the square of negative 0 0.75, if you want to, um, if, if you are squaring a negative, make sure that you enclose in, in the parentheses, including the negative sign. Do not just simply put negative 0 0.75 and then square. You must put a parenthesis first and then square it so that the negative sign will be included because um, the square of a negative is always positive because negative times negative is positive. Or you may not put any more negative sign in the calculator. In a way, it's the same answer. So it will be 0 0.5625, negative 2.75, um, square of negative 2.75 is 7.5625, square of negative 175 is 3.0625, and so on. All right, so this is just repeated. Negative 0 0.75, 0 0.25, and 125. So those are repeated 
values so we can just write directly the answer so now um we have the square of x minus mean and now based on the formula it says sum okay this sigma symbol means total or sum the sum of square of x minus mean so meaning we're gonna get the sum of this so it's the sum of square of x minus mean you just add all these values in this column and then we'll get the sum of 22.25 so the standard deviation now so we're going to replace this with 22.25 based on this and then the n is 12 because um there are 12 numbers here or 12 respondents so that's why we replace n by 12 and so um we just subtract the bottom first 12 minus 1 is 11 and then divide 22.25 divided by 11 that's approximately 2.02 so we just round it off that's why i'm using approximately equal to symbol since we don't have the exact anymore since we are rounding rounding off up to two decimal places and then now we'll get the square root of 2.02 so square root of 2.02 approximately equal to 1.42 so that's the standard deviation of the difference that is 1.42 so we're going to need these two values the mean and the standard deviation to find the t or the t test statistic value so this is the formula and then we're going to replace the 175 to the mean and 1.42 to the standard deviation so it will be there and the n of course is 12 because there are 12 respondents so we're going to compute first the bottom so it will be um square root of 12 is 3.46 approximately so that's why we change the equal sign to approximately equal to and then um after that you divide the bottom first 1.42 divided by 3.46 so it will give you one uh, i mean 0 0.41 and then that's the time we divide 175 divide 0 0.41 so approximately it will be 4.268 so this time we put three decimal places if it's t value or test statistic because the t critical later in the t table is in three decimal places so it's easier for us to compare the two values so um so we have the test statistic it's 4.268 and um next step is to find the t critical using the t table so um we need the degrees of freedom because that is needed in our t table to know that the t critical or the critical value so the degrees of freedom has different formulas for every stat tool in this case in our t-test for paired samples it's n minus one that's the formula so n is 12 because in our given there are 12 respondents or there are 12 pairs of data so it will be 12 minus one is 11. so as long as you have the degrees of freedom now you can go to our t-table so every t table um, that you can download online should have the same values in the table so you don't need to ask where do i get this where's the link of this t, t table because you just need to find a t table in the google um in, in, in google you can just google the t table and there are different um um there, there are different designs of t table but it's the same values within that table so it doesn't have to be exactly this so now we're going to use the degrees of freedom which is 11 and we're going to encircle that this is this row this column is the degrees of freedom and you find the 11 because your computation of degrees of freedom is 11 is here so these are the possible critical values and then next is to find the alpha level so usually this the default alpha level of um or the level of significance of 
uh, the the t test or any type of tool as long as it's not um, specified it's always 5 percent 0 0.05 now there are two 0 0.05s here here under the one tail and here under the two tails so uh, we usually use the two tails because the two tails is say is it's like asking if there is difference between the two groups but you don't favor any group you just want to know if there's difference you don't it doesn't matter if which one is bigger or smaller while for one tail you only use this 0 0.05 under one tail if it's asking if uh let's say is the test one bigger than the test two so in that case you are looking for one side that is bigger while the two tails is just asking if there is difference between the two groups it doesn't matter which one is bigger or smaller so in this in our example it's not specified which one is bigger or smaller that we are trying to hypothesize so you're going to use the two tails it's 0 0.05 under two tails so uh, after that then we can identify the critical value which is the intersection of the two um highlighted column and row so it's it will be 2.201 so observe that these are three decimal places critical values in this table that's why our t test here or i mean the t stat here is 4.268 it's three decimal places so now how do we interpret this so if it is um the if it's if the absolute value of t or the t stat is uh, greater than the critical value then it the result is significant that means there is significant difference between the two groups so the, that means you reject the null hypothesis which usually hi, null hypothesis saying that there is significant uh, other, i mean there's no significant difference between the two groups so uh, observe that there is absolute value symbol because uh, if if this is negative, you just need to ignore that or make it just make it positive. That's the idea of the absolute value. Make always the value positive, even if it's negative. So um, another thing is if this the t stat is equal or lesser than the critical value, then the result is not significant so you do not reject the null hypothesis so here our um since our t is bigger than the, or greater than the critical value which is 4.268 and the critical value is only 2.201 so therefore there is significant difference so we reject the null hypothesis so that's the implication. So therefore, there is significant difference between the test one and the test two results of the respondents. So if you want to know which one is um, bigger, because there is significant difference, so you just get the mean of the two groups. So whichever is bigger mean, um, that means that's the one that is bigger. So yeah, so that's uh, the, the how you, we compute manually the t-test for paired samples.